Now, absolute values with less than, equal than. So everybody look at this here. Now, I have a different way of teaching this than what the book says to do. Everybody got that? Mm -hmm. So we're trying to make things easy. What I think of is this here. I kind of put the answer up there like that because here's why. And here's my logic behind this. Everybody listen. It's a logic thing, right? Up here, I'm looking for values smaller than 20, right? Correct? Smaller than 20? Well, numbers smaller than 20, when I look at their negative ones, have to be larger than the negative 20. They have to be between negative 20 and 20. That's what I'm saying. In order for the numbers to be smaller than 20, their absolute value, they have to be between negative 20 and 20. So I just kind of write a little sign like this here to do my work, okay? And then what I do with this is the following. When I go to graph it, and the first question I ask is, notice there's a bar underneath that. Everybody see that bar, right? That bar means what? Is 20 part of the solution or not? If there's a bar, is 20 part of the solution? Yeah, yes or no? It is. So therefore, I put dots on the negative 20 and 20, and because I need values smaller, they're the numbers that are between them. Now that's how I do it, I do logic. That is not in a math book, and that's probably not a standard way that, that most people do those things, all right? So, I call those ands. Those are ands, meaning that I'm looking for answers that fit both categories, they'll be between them, got it? You see, if it's a less than or equal to, it will be, it will be, it will go between them. Everybody got it? They go in between, all right? So here's what's different about this one. The only thing different notice we have, is that I'm still looking for values smaller than A, except this time H not part of the answer. So it's not a closed circle, it's an open circle. Does everybody see the difference? It has to be an open circle, not a closed one. Okay? Right? Now, but what about when they're greater than? Well, this time I'm looking for numbers larger than five, right? Larger than five would be to the outside. That's what I call it, going outside the five, bigger. They're not going in, they're going out. And in a sense, um, I'm looking for numbers, numbers smaller than negative five, absolute value-wise, will be larger than five. Does that make sense, what I'm saying? So if we have a greater than, instead of the values going in, they're going to go out. And because there's no bar, there will be an open circle and they're going out. So this is how I work them. If I see a greater than for an absolute value, I know it's going out. The less thans are going in. And I usually stand in front of the room and have my elbows going in and out, my elbows are my points, in or out. And here on this one, the difference is, notice, you think the graphs are gonna go in or go out? Because I'm looking for values larger than seven. So on which side of seven would it be? To the right. Okay, follow what I'm saying? Notice we the right, and this time because there's a bar, it's got a dot. Notice this here. The values larger than seven are what I call outside, going outside the seven. So it has to go outside the negative seven and not in towards each other. Right, Paul? I go use the words out and in. Does that make sense why I use the words out and in? Because either the graphs are going out or they're going in. Now this is only true on absolute value inequality ones. All right? Okay? Uh, Go ahead and stop.